Hello everyone, thank you very much for attending this presentation. I am Gonzalo Villegas and I'm going to be talking about the organ as a musical instrument and its characterization, specifically its behavior in space and in frequency after measuring the pressure outside in the nave of a church. The current work today is going to concern the measurements in one church in Paris, uh, Saint Elizabeth d'Hongri, after four different conditions, exciting small and big cavities and exciting using two-dimensional or cylindrical sources or three-dimensional or omnidirectional sources. This is part of a bigger effort and measurement campaign series that started in 2021 by the members listed here and in collaboration as well with the ISCD in Paris and the Università di Perugia in Italy. In an end-to-end -end modeling exercise, one can see that we start by modeling the pressure supply system, the blowers, or in the old times, the bellows that manually had to be pushed by, by uh, people in the church. The keyboard is actioning which pipes that will receive, is transmitting the order of which um, pallet or valve is going to open and then convey air pressure supply to one pipe or more pipes in the Winchester. If the multiplicity is assumed times 300 or 3000, we have an amount comparable to the modeling cavities that we're presenting today, the positive of the organ in St. Elizabeth d'Hongri or the great organ. In the right hand side, the organ facade labeled, you see an image of what the facade of the organ is. This is an array of cylinders, organ pipes, that interface between the inside and the outside of the cavity, which couples the radiation with the nave, which is the church. We shall take a closer look at the cavities that we're going to explore. The first one of them in this organ of St. Elizabeth d'Hongri is the positive, which is normally at the back of the organ performer, the organist, to positive the door, and is smaller, protrudes into the nave and doesn't find any uh, free field propagation obstacles. The other one, bigger, is the great organ, which has bigger complexity, especially in the transmission of orders from the keyboard to the winchests. It's got a bigger number of winchests and pipes, and therefore the modeling also is quite intricate since uh, since the amount of towers that you can see in the facade is farther away from the idealization of flat interface. Lastly, we overlay here diagrammatical views of front and zenith of the organ and the wind chest and some acquisition lines with blue dots over a line where we have located microphones for acquisition of the radiated field. Next, we see how we started setting up the measurement equipment. It basically con uh, consisted of suspending microphones in free, in free field in front of the facade and sliding them um, <clears throat> a constant amount of space parallel to the facade of the positive and the great organ at distances of seven meters and 10 meters above the ground level. Um, we have also played, uh, placed microphones inside the cavity and inside resonators so that they serve as reference. We have accounted as part of the protocol for the calibration of the microphones. We have accounted for the um, for the travel distance and the uh, and the travel time, therefore for time alignment of the arrival of the front when the acquisition locations are over a line and not over a sphere or a circle. We have corrected for that, and after aligning in time, we have then uh, appropriately windowed out any reflections for directivity considerations, and we have band, uh, band, uh, band filtered in octave bands, sorry, and then produced uh, as a relative SPL measurements. Here we see a close look to the interior of one of the cavities. This is the positive as seen from the position of the organist. You can see this is one of the organ maker choices 
that they increase in length or in height monotonically. This is because it's being built chromatically. You can also see that the, um, the geometry, the dimensions of the pipes is non-homogeneous. All of them have different diameters, different cylindricity, conicity, or height, as it's been mentioned already. And in the image at the right-hand side, the top is an inside view of the, of the facade. Therefore, that is the last amount of pipes behind uh, before transmitting, uh, radiating into the nave of the church. Then we place acquisition and excitation devices in this cavity. One of them is the cylindrical source on the left hand side marked in green, which amounts to one meter of vertical array of speakers. And the other one is a dodecahedral um, omnidirectional source and some of the reference microphones that are um, they're pointing frontwards and some other ones are inside of C3 and C4 of the fluid pipes. Uh, for the great organ, however, we needed to amount from top to floor, uh, floor to top of the, of the winches cavity um, with a bigger source, which is on the right hand side depicted by this two meter array of monochord speakers in process, as you see, of characterizing it in an anechoic chamber in Paris, in Sorbonne. And next, we're going to look at some of the results that this has, this has provided for this only organ under the conditions mentioned before in Saint Elizabeth d'Angre. We are showing first the relative SPL for the positive organ, and a continuation, it will be the case of the great organ. For each of the plots, we separate the frequency content for, for octave bands and we, we overlay together the excitation received by cylindrical sources and omnidirectional sources. It is remarkable in the low frequencies and coherent as well that there is not much of a feature in, in feature change in space, only uh, a small change in level as we get out from on axis of frontality as the sources are so are poor in the in the in the sites uh, in 250 hertz please uh, note that this is accounting i'm talking about this integral source the blue line that the estimation of the near field and far field for the for the cylindrical source namely the three, three dB per doubling distance and the six dB doubling distance estimation has some uh, shortcomings. At 500 Hertz, we start seeing some interesting deviations, mild but interesting, and at one kilohertz, we see that we have gained remarkable laterality and particularly in the case of the omnidirectional source, which might be the case that it's been feeding energy to the side and it's been reflected laterally. And this is something that we have not isolated. We have isolated or windowed out the wall reflections of the church, but not reflections coming in from the inside of the buffet or the cavity of the organ. High frequencies show potential individualization of lobes that we cannot resolve given our spatial uh, grid resolution of 20 centimeters between microphone positions. See at two kilohertz, for example, the interesting exchange between exciting omnidirectionally or um, cylindrically of a trough or trough or a peak, changing uh, from minus five dB to plus three dB approximately uh, for on the on-axis position. We now move to comment on the results of the great organ. See that this came with difficulties on aligning the center of the organ and where the sources were. Uh, we achieved uh, an interesting result for the cases of two kilohertz and four kilohertz, in which the individualization of lobe contributions is actually resolvable. We are now measuring at a minimum distance of two meters from the center of the instrument, whereas in the previous case it was slightly less than that. However, there's a scaling consideration in between the, ins, uh, the, the positive and the great organ, which is a ratio of one to 10 in width and uh, a ratio possibly of one to two in 
in pipe diameters and space in between pipe to pipe of the facade, which is in frequencies such as two kilohertz and above going to affect the scattering considerations. It is interesting to see that the different strategies of excitation, namely omnidirectional and cylindrical, give for 2K and 4K individualized lobes that do not coincide necessarily in the same directions. This leads to believe that not only the uh, strategy of excitation has something to do with the response, but also the system of the facade, which uh, we try to analyze in terms of uh, what is its contribution when the front propagation, the pr propagation front goes through it. And if we consider ourselves uh, a point source in propagation and we want to find a point source outside, this is not achieved. If we try to find outside a plane wave propagation front, this is not the case. And we have here worked out one of the examples from measurements in the Anigoy chamber, which is the right hand side plot in which we have only a facade system and the propagation of the same source, a vertical cylindrical source, goes through the, an ideal facade of um, uniformly distributed cylinders and produces this relative SPL show in form on the right hand side. The best approximation we receive from that is uh, an array of monopoles where the uh, flow strength and the phases of each of those contributions coinciding with each of the apertures in between the cylinders of the facade, aka the, the, the pipes of the facade, will, will sum up the field radiated in front. This is something elaborated and mentioned in a Vienna talk in the last September 2022, introduced by the Professor Maltekob and explored more in depth in the book by Ochman in 2021 published by Springer. In the current work, we have discussed and introduced a method for measuring the related field in the, uh, in the propagation uh, of organ-like organ cavities or buffets. We still have to compare data that we have acquired in idealist, idealist, uh, idealized cases in the anechoic chamber which you can see now in the bottom right hand side, where we are just trying to characterize the, uh, the facade system. We want to achieve also a, a, free, a, a transfer function a, a, or an impedance, an equivalent impedance of what would be the filtering effect of the facade, not only its characterization in space as we have done, and we would like to extend the comparison with all the measurements that we have done in the great organ of the same church with um, not only electroacoustic sources as, as they have been used so far, but also with um, pipe excitation only in order to explore the more, the more realistic um, system of excitation and also the, the, the exact distribution of monopoles that corresponds to the normal operation of the organ. Uh, rest of the images show um, further data that needs to be analyzed for characterizing all the facades that we have measured, such as is Notre Dame de Paris, and numerical uh, devices that we are in process of developing and implementing better uh, boundary conditions for them. Thank you very much for your attention, and I look forward to receiving your questions.